Welcome back. We're here with our friend John Dickerson. People say that after a 17, 18 days on the job or whatever it is, that things might be over for John Kelly. Do you think that's, or rather his control is slipping? Well, we, we may have overstated the control thing in the first instance. I mean, this is a p little bit of a problem the way we cover White Houses in this one in particular is there was a lot of like, oh, everything's changed because it's a new guy. Mm -hmm. The job of chief of staff is incredibly hard under any circumstance. And under this, with an improvisational president, it's particularly hard. So, um, <laughs> so. I like improvisational president. Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, you know, this Could I have a location I shouldn't go and a way I'll end the world? Thank you. <laughs> You know, but but it, the the reason it's so tough for for um, for chiefs of staff is presidents come in after winning a campaign and they've beaten the world. They are the expert at getting elected, mm -hmm. and it's basically on instinct. And particularly this president who has such a gut connection with his supporters. And so when your chief of staff says, "Don't do this," because there's this huge thing that's now attached to you, they, you say, "No, I'm I know what I'm doing." And so that's a tension any president faces, mm -hmm. and this one in particular faces it. So um, it's a hard, hard, hard job under any circumstances, and probably hard to, to kind of bring this White House back into line, given everything we've seen, and seeing the fact that people freelance. They walk into the president, they talk to him when they want to, they get on the phone with reporters when they want to. Uh, so he, he, um, he's got a tough job. Uh, speaking of tough jobs, I, I should have done this earlier. Would, would you like a cocktail before we go any, any further? I, is this, is it, uh, is it, yes, I've already poured myself one. That's, yeah. If you like just a little... I, I'm, little I'm worried the questions are going to get that much harder. harder. No, no, no. <laughs> it just... This, this week, people are saying... Cheers. Cheers. To America. Now, um... To your health. People are saying... People are saying that this, this week is uh, something changed. Many people are saying something changed in the presidency. Uh, maybe the public, certainly the Republican Party's um, relationship with Donald Trump. Like, two roads diverged in a wood, and he certainly took the one less traveled by. Right. You know, that he sh shouldn't have taken. Do you think this is really a breaking point or an opportunity well, for a breaking point with the Republican Party and, and their president? Well, you've seen uh, on Thursday Bob Corker, the chairman of the, the Senate Foreign Relations Committee, he is not a hothead. He doesn't jump on and, and, and make incendiary comments just out of the blue. He's not a usual suspect in terms of a Trump critic. He, in fact, has been golfing with him. And he said the president, there are questions about his stability and that he needed to do some deep introspection. This was not just with respect to this question of what happened in Charlottesville. This was about his entire ability and capacity in the job. Again, this is not somebody who makes sort of outlandish comments as a matter of course. And so he is raising the question that's been raised always about the, the president, which is this question of temperament. Does a man of impulses, which who and those impulses have served him very well in life and as a candidate, know how to fit those into a presidency, which is a job that every president who goes through it is about constraints. It's about constraining your impulses and knowing how to. And um, Corker, Senator Corker of Tennessee, rendered this verdict, and that feels very different in response to this moment we're in. That feels that feels different. Unstable or questioned his stability. You say. Qu questioned stability. Questioned stability. That, that that means mental stability. So he's questioning whether the man with the uh, nuclear launch codes is necessarily stable. That's what. Well, that's what Senator Corker said. Did it? Yeah. <laughs> We've, we've got to go here, but before we do, I just wanted to ask you, as a student of history and someone who studied the presidents, and um, as a Southerner and someone from Virginia and someone who went to UVA, um, what do you think of the um, comparison of Washington and Lee that the president is making? Uh, do, do you think that is on any firm ground? Well, they were both, they were, I mean, on the slavery, there is a comparison uh, between the two. But the difference is that uh, General Washington founded the country. He was and did everything as that first president because he knew everybody was watching him as he was founding the country. And he laid the cornerstone for the country in what he did beforehand in fighting the revolution, but also then in the way he behaved in office. He's a, and so... Uh, by contrast, General Lee, who at West Point, they don't even call him General Lee when he went there because he was a general of the Confederacy, mm -hmm. uh, was in open rebellion against that thing that Washington built. And, and, and out for the purposes of keeping an institution uh, that is a part of America's original sin. They're not compar comparable at all. Um, and so uh, that's the way I feel about that comparison. <laughs>
Watch Face the Nation Sundays on CBS. John Dickerson, everybody. We'll be right back with Michael Rappaport.